Okay, thank you, ma'am. And uh, I hope uh, everybody can hear me. I'm going to talk to you about the, uh, the our own dearmost sun, uh, and, and I call it as a living with our star, the sun, uh, because sun plays a very important role in our everyday activities and life. And also, Aditya Wan Elwan is going to do uh, some front end research of the sun and the uh, interplanetary medium of uh, the particles which is uh, emitted from the sun. So, I'm going to cover today's lecture mostly on the physics of the sun and its importance to the everyday life and what, what, what are the physics which governs the activity of the sun. So, that is my goal of this particular lecture. And what you see on the background picture here um, is, uh, is the, uh, the sun Earth space. The left hand side image, what you see is the sun. And the right hand side image, what you see is the Earth. Um, in the cocoon of magnetic field, uh, Earth is well protected by the magnetic field. So um, going, going forward, um, I just want to uh, give you a glimpse of where we live. And what you see on the right hand side is the picture of our, our Milky Way galaxy. It's not an actual picture, it is a, it is a picture by artistic uh, 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 observations, um, and it contains all kinds of stars. And the size of this uh, galaxy is about 27 kiloparsec. I mean, if I, uh, I, mean, if I convert that kiloparsec into a number, uh, which is something like 10 power 13 kilometer, that means it's one uh, followed by 13 uh, zeros. In other words, we usually, uh, such a large distances, uh, we call them using a light year. Uh, so this is about 3.26 light year. That means to cross the uh, 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 galaxy from one end to the other end, it takes about 3.26 light years if you are traveling at the speed of the light. I mean, in, in the simpler form, if, if I want to do that, if I travel between south and north of India through flight, it would take me, I have to travel something like 500 crore times to cross one parsec, I mean, leave alone the kilo parsec, to, to, to have one parsec distance, I have to cross north and south of India 500 crore times. So that's the kind of uh, distance we talk about in our universe. And our solar system, I mean, the, the, the place where we live in, is a very small portion of that whole uh, galaxy. What you see on the left hand side is the uh, Milky Way galaxies uh, observed from, um, uh, from the ground based uh, uh, telescopes. And um, uh, we, we live in this particular uh, part of the galaxies. And we also call this as a heliosphere. I just want to uh, explain what it is a heliosphere is. The movie on the left, what you see here, actually shows you a kind of a heliospheric uh, um, uh, mimic of a heliosphere that is inside the galaxy. Um, uh, you have a, a cocoon, um, which, which is shown on the uh, now. Um, so that is, we call this a heliosphere. This is nothing new. Uh, people have seen this in other uh, galaxies. Uh, we call them as astrosphere. And some of the images of the astrospheres are seen on the right hand side. What you see here is the central portion. The central portion is your, uh, the primary star, which is, which is, uh, which is governing, the, uh, governing the physics within this particular uh, region. And you see a very strong region here, we, which we, we, this is called as a heliopause. That means this is a region which separates between the local environment compared to the surrounding region. And that is called as a heliopause region. And luckily for us, um, uh, we had uh, this Voyager mission which was going through it, um, uh, which, which uh, has crossed this uh, heliopause. Uh, here is an image. Uh, uh, what you see here is the, uh, the solar system starting from the sun as the uh, primary object and the rest of the planet on a linear scale. And, uh, and the numbers, what you see here is one and 10. I mean, of course, it's a logarithmic scale. Uh, the number, what you see here is one and 10 is nothing but the one astronomical unit and 10 astronomical unit. One astronomical unit is the distance between the sun and the earth. And the sun and the certain uh, uh, is, is about 10 astronomical units. 
the Voyager uh, uh, did cross the heliopause, which is marked here as the as the uh, the region separating the uh, solar system to the uh, outside the solar system. Um, so uh, so that is that is a region which is separating the uh, uh, these two uh, region. And the heliopause is marked here uh, um, as as it crosses the heliopause. Uh, the um, uh, the density difference uh, between the inner heliosphere and outer heliosphere is uh, uh, it is clearly marked here. And also, some of the interesting results came from Voyager is that you start to see these some of these events, uh, which is uh, marked as uh, the arrows here. Uh, they are all events coming from the sun. So what it says is that uh, even though the sun governs only the heliosphere. Some of the coronal mass ejections, which is emitted from the sun, do reach and uh, reach the place above the heliopause. That means in the interstellar medium. So the medium between the uh, galaxies or between the stars in our here is the, again the same picture. Um, um, so um, I mean again here I'm walking it uh, just for you to uh, uh, get a feel for. How the how the system is in a logarithmic scale, and uh, the heliopause is around 100 AU, and you have this wood curl where most of these uh, um, uh, what you call meteoroids and uh, other uh, objects can come from. Uh, they are at the distance of uh, 10,000 to 100,000 uh, astronomical unit, and these are the first stars uh, which we which you will see once you cross the uh, heliopause. And again, the distances are L1 position from Earth. Uh, L1 is the Lagrangian one point. I will talk more about this L1 positions uh, when I talk about Aditya. The distance of L1 position is uh, very close to the Earth. Uh, the, the distance is 100th of a, a you from the Earth. That means it's very close to Earth. And uh, you can reach L1 by, uh, I mean, if you uh, travel between South and North of India by air, uh, if you do it for 500 times, you will reach uh, the distance of L1. Okay, and Aritya, which mostly samples the regions in the inner heliosphere, uh, starting from L1 uh, to the solar distance. So this is for your information. Um, just to want to uh, tell, let you know that uh, we don't study all of them in the in our, in our helios, helio, uh, heliosphere. Only a portion of the heliosphere is uh, sampled by the Aritya. Okay, now coming to why do we study the sun? Because uh, sun is an important uh, part of our life. Uh, I think without sun, uh, Earth will not exist and we will not exist. That's the first thing uh, what we have to keep in mind is uh, uh, sun is important, uh, which is the essential for life on Earth. And uh, of course, sun is also important because there are certain physics which happens in the sun cannot be, um, uh, cannot be reproduced in our laboratory conditions because of the, the condition which is prevailed on the Earth. So sun has a different uh, uh, parameters, uh, parametric space, which cannot be availed on the Earth. So in some of the physics which happens in the sun cannot be reproduced on the laboratory, and hence can, sun can provide a, a kind of an unmanned laboratory for you. And uh, sun is nearby, and uh, sun is one of the uh, billions of stars. So hence, uh, by studying the sun in detail, since it's nearby, uh, we also try to understand the other astrophysical objects, other stars, especially the sun-like stars. And since sun is nearby, this is the only star which can be resolved to greater details. Uh, because of the technology and the telescopes, what we have currently have, uh, the only star which can be resolved is the sun. And of course, uh, sun plays a major uh, effect on our Earth, Earth's atmosphere, and hence the uh, and hence the uh, our ionospheric dynamics as well as the biospheric dynamics is governed by the effect from the sun, and hence it's important to understand what the sun is emitting at what time. Though sun is our star, uh, it's a normal star. It is nothing uh, very uh, very spectacular like what you talk about. Uh, black holes or neutron stars or white dwarfs or Asian for that matter. Uh, sun is a very normal star, which is a middle-aged 4.5 gigahertz uh, main sequence star. Uh, it's of the spectral type G2. 
and uh, sun is a special star it's the only star on which we can resolve the spatial scale and which has the fundamental processes uh, which takes place on the star and the sun also provides almost all the energy to the earth uh, which is an essential part for us to live on earth and it provides us a unique laboratory in which to learn about various branches of physics which is not which is not feasible to do it on earth with the conditions which is available on the sun so the so it, it, it basically allows us to do uh, a lot of research on the physics which cannot be done uh, without the star and also it allows us to understand the astrophysical objects like other stars just a few number you don't have to uh, um, you don't have to memorize these numbers uh, but just to give you a uh, hint of uh, what these numbers are about the mass of the sun is about 10 to 30 kg uh, um, whose i mean whose mass is something like a 10 to 5 times more massier, massive than the earth's mass radius is about 7 to 10 to 5 km uh, which is about uh, uh, you, you can fit in some 109 earths into this and the average density is 1.4 g per centimeter cube not a very high number i mean at least in the atmosphere luminosity is 10 to 36 watt we refer to i mean i'm putting it as one solar mass one uh, solar radius one luminosity is a kind of a standard candle which is used in other astrophysical objects so when when i talk about massive stars i talk about uh, the mass of the star in, in, in reference to the sun like uh, 10 solar mass or 20 solar mass that kind of stuff the core temperature is 10 to 6 degree kelvin which is an important physical parameter uh, because uh, the energy source is uh, generated at the core this temperature is essential for the energy generation and the surface gravitational acceleration is 274 meter per second square much higher than what you have it on earth and its age as i said it's about 4.5 uh, uh, giga years uh, this is uh, measured from the meteoritic isotopes uh, distance is about 1.5 to 48 kilometer 150 uh, million uh, which we call it as one astronomical unit. And uh, typically, uh, uh, we, we, astronomy, we talk about uh, angular scales. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, when I see the sun from Earth uh, in the angular scale, one half second corresponds to about 700 kilometer on the uh, solar surface. And the rotation period, I mean, sun does do rotate. And the rotation period is about 27 days at its equator. And its chemical composition is 73% hydrogen, 25% helium, and 2% uh, uh, from other uh, uh, objects. Why do we study the sun? I mean, this uh, gives you a, a, a contextual uh, link to the physics what you uh, most of the uh, students study about. Um, most of the physics what you do, uh, uh, um, what you study, uh, do get applic applicable to the uh, sun. Say, for example, the plasma physics, what you study about uh, on, on the Earth, uh, do have uh, implications on the, on, the, uh, uh, on the sun. Because sun is nothing but a, a, a gas of plasma. It consi consists of uh, electrons, protons, and ions, heavier ions including. Uh, so the, it's not a solid object. It's a gaseous object. And since it's a gaseous object, and it also has uh, many of the atoms present, present in it, your atomic and molecular physics, what you study, plays a major uh, role in understanding the sun. And uh, the fundamental physics, like neutrinos and gravitation, also plays a major role, uh, because the, uh, the uh, neutrinos, what you see, uh, what, you, what is just generated inside the core uh, through the nuclear reaction process, but uh, do have some indications about what kind of energy generation which happens inside the sun. And as I said, uh, the sun uh, also applicable, the parameters also applicable to the cool stars. Their activity, structure, and evolution can be studied uh, using the solar observations. And of course, uh, I mean, off late, uh, you would have heard about this exoplanetary research. Um, and the, the sun and the solar system play a major role in understanding the exoplanetary conditions and uh, the uh, research from it. And uh, the Earth's atmosphere gets modulated by the solar activity uh, through the modulation of the cosmic rays coming from the uh, cosmic sources. 
and uh, they also modulate the interstellar medium between the sun and the earth or the other planets. So it's important to understand the sun to know the uh, the earth's uh, uh, climatic changes as well as the uh, uh, local interstellar uh, medium. Of course, I mean, that is uh, straight away related to the space weather conditions, like uh, what you have is uh, Earth weather conditions. We do have space weather conditions, uh, the conditions in the space uh, experienced by many of the satellites as well as the uh, people walk on the uh, space. And of course, sun being a very high temperature, it has a lot of uh, turbulence, and it also have dynamos inside the core of the sun to generate the uh, uh, high magnetic fields in the system. Now, I'll just talk about a few aspects of how do we program. Uh, uh, we, uh, since, as I said, the distance is pretty large, it's not easy to uh, uh, reach them, in, in, uh, I mean, to go near to the object and study them. So the only way we study them is through uh, particles and radiations. Uh, the uh, the uh, radiations, if we talk about it, it's nothing but the electromagnetic radiations, like the uh, electromagnetic radiations uh, in the visible part, IR part, as well as the uh, the radio, as well as the, all all electromagnetic radiations. What you can uh, think about it is emitted by the sun. And we also uh, study them through photometry. Photometry refers to the uh, flux received at different wavelength uh, band. Um, that gives you some indications about the temperature of the star. And we also study them through spectroscopy, as I said, uh, because it has a lot of atomic and molecular. Uh, um, uh, emissions and absorption. Uh, we can talk about the temperature as well as the abundances of these elements, which has a critical uh, uh, input to the uh, evolution of the star. And of course, polarimetry gives you uh, many details about the, uh, the stellar uh, uh, object itself. Of course, we also have gravity, gravitational radiations. I mean, uh, many of these uh, lensing, uh, when, when the further away stars is being observed, the sun do lens some of the stars behind it. And uh, that talks about the uh, gravitational potential of, these, uh, uh, of the sun. Particle per se, um, as I said, uh, the sun is a gas of uh, uh, charged particles, electrons, photons, and heavier nuclei. And uh, they, they are the particles which, which comes from, uh, the, from the sun and bombards the earth from all directions. And they also have neutrons, like neutrinos, uh, uh, which is due to the nuclear reactions inside the stars. So I'll just go through each aspects of uh, the, the physics behind the energy source of the, the stars. Uh, current, our, our current understanding is depicted here. Uh, what does the uh, sun, uh, if I peel the sun into, uh, an, I mean, if, the, if, I, if I am able to peel the sun and uh, pierce them into the inner part of the sun, what you see here is an internal structure, which is the core, uh, which is depicted here as a small uh, bluish color. And then we have a, a, a zone called radiative zone from the core to all the way up to the red zone, which is roughly about three fourths of the interior part of the sun is covered by the radiative zone. That means the energy generated in the core is, uh, is uh, propagated into the, uh, into the, inside the sun uh, through mainly the radiation mechanism. And then the last one fourth of the layer of the inside the sun is uh, is convective zone. It's, it's basically the, the energy transfer from the uh, from the radiative zone to the upper part of the, I mean, the photosphere of the sun is through the convection zone. And the sun, what we see from Earth uh, with, with the telescopes or, or with the naked eye through uh, protective glasses, what we see is the photosphere. And you do see a lot of structures in the photosphere, like the sunspots, flashes, and other, other details. And uh, there is another layer called the chromosphere, which is slightly above the photosphere. And uh, that is called as a chromospheric layer. Then you start to see the flares and uh, chromospheric structures and the prominences, what you see, uh, and many more structures, what you see in the, in the chromosphere. And above that chromosphere is what we call the corona, which is uh, seen only during an eclipse because the coronal intensity is a million times fainter than the disk intensity. So during the normal conditions, uh, when the disk is overwhelming the corona, 
you don't see the corona until you block the, uh, the solar disk, then only you will start to see the corona. So this is the typical structure, and we just go through each layers uh, from the interior to the top post and try to see what each one of them holds for us. The interior uh, is basically the energy protecting region, which is the core of uh, the sun. It's purely a hydrogen hydrogen uh, uh, fusion reaction which happens. Uh, so basically, two protons uh, fuse together to form a helium nuclear. And along with that, uh, you, you form this uh, uh, light, which is in the high energy uh, electromagnetic radiation in the gamma ray. And it also produces uh, neutrinos uh, through the hydrogen hydrogen reactions. And that is the neutrinos which uh, which can straight away come from the core without getting affected by any of the uh, solar structures what we see in the uh, previous picture. That is the neutrinos generated here can easily travel because neutrino has a interaction cross section very very small, so it doesn't interact with any of the matter in the in the solar interior in the surface or even in the interplanetary medium, and it can reach the Earth uh, straight away from the core. So we use the neutrinos uh, to understand the uh, the nuclear fusion rate at which the uh, the hydrogen is getting burned inside the star, and that nuclear fusion rate tells us about the the kind of uh, energy which is uh, generated inside the star. And as you can see from that, we can uh, conclude that the nuclear reactions burns about 10 power 11 kilogram per second of hydrogen into helium inside the core. To do that, you need a large energy because it's basically fusion reaction basically means you bring in two protons and you have to overcome the um, repulsive force of these two protons to fuse them together. So you need that kind of energy to fuse them together. That energy is created by the huge temperatures which is, uh, which is uh, present inside the core. So the 10 power uh, 6 temperature which I talked about in the in the initial uh, stage of the numbers that is a temperature which is required to fuse the two uh, two protons to form a helium so that is the temperature which is needed to uh, generate the energy productions inside the core of the uh, sun so inside the core the particle density and temperature are so high that individual protons ram into each other at sufficient speed to overcome the Coulomb barrier and hence forming heavier helium atoms and releasing the required energy. And this also produces neutrinos. And uh, the, the thermal pressures, I mean, that is the pressure which is generated by this uh, high temperature, will also uh, support the collapse uh, due to the gravitational uh, from the core. Here is a, a picture of the internal structure, how, how it looked like uh, of the, uh, of the uh, sun. And what you see here is uh, on the left hand side, vertical axis is the temperature in, in the core six. And uh, on the x axis is the, uh, the radius in terms of uh, solar radii. That is, zero solar radii is the core, and one solar radii is the photosphere. And on the right hand side, y axis is the density. And what it tells you is that the uh, in, in, inside the core, the temperatures are very high and the densities are very high, 10 power 17 and 10 power, uh, uh, I mean, uh, 14 or 6 degree Kelvin. That's the kind of temperature uh, what you uh, get on this uh, inside of the core. And as you go away from the, uh, from the interior, the temperature drops down and uh, the density also drops down and hence the pressure drops down. And the uh, the, um, um, the the total mass is starts to increase. The total mass is basically the mass contained within the radius. And as you go uh, I mean, uh, from the core to uh, go away from it, the mass will start uh, increasing because the radius is also increasing, even though the density is decreasing. So this is the kind of internal model which uh, we have arrived at. During the initial phase of uh, this model verification, so one of the model verification is to look at the uh, surface luminosity from the sun. And with that, only this model was tuned. To when, when they initially did that, there was a, a, a kind of a confusion because the uh, uh, to get this luminosity, the nuclear burn rate uh, inside the core 
has to be very high. And uh, uh, because of nuclear burn rate, what is needed to uh, get the luminosity, the, uh, the, uh, the neutrino rate was three times what was initially measured. And that's the famous uh, neutrino problem, uh, which was uh, there uh, maybe a decade before. And uh, 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 the, the, there was a lot of conflict between the neutrino physicists as well as the solar physicists, basically to understand uh, who is right and who is wrong. And finally, uh, the, uh, um, the better understanding of the neutrino physics uh, provide uh, uh, that the neutrinos has uh, the flavors of new electron and tau neutrinos. The neutrinos and what people were uh, measuring uh, uh, initially was only the electron neutrino. They were missing the tau and mu neutrino. And this neutrino gets uh, modulated as it propagates in the interplanetary medium. And hence, the one third of the uh, measurements uh, matches with the three flavors of the neutrinos, uh, which uh, the neutrinos were. Uh, uh, modulating uh, in the interplanetary medium. That is how the neutrino puzzle solved, and uh, the person uh, who solved it also got a uh, Nobel Prize. Uh, for that, that is how the solution. neutrino puzzle solved, and neutrino uh, oscillation uh, was solved, and the flavor changes were approved. Flavor changes were brought in, where flavor changes were brought in, where so this is the one classic case of brought in, where so this is the one classic case of brought in, where these of the the astronomical object can improve our physical understanding, which uh, which could not be confirmed uh, with the ground-based or the local uh, uh, laboratory-based understanding. The convection zone, um, uh, which uh, we talked about here, um, the, uh, the one fourth of the layer is a very important layer, uh, which actually uh, brings in all the uh, important structures what you see on the sun. So this is a 30% of the, uh, the outermost layers is the uh, convection layers, and that's uh, energy is mostly transported by the radiation. And in this layer, the gas is convertibly unstable. And this is like uh, when you boil uh, water, uh, water st starts to boil, and what you see is the bubbles on the, on the boiling water is nothing but the convective uh, energy transport from, the, uh, from your uh, heating locations to the, uh, the surface of the water. And so due to this, uh, the time scale changes from the time scale for a random walk of the photons to the radiative zone. So for example, the photons which are generated inside the uh, core of the sun can travel to this uh, convective layers much faster than the photons which are at one third of the layer and come to the surface of the, uh, the star because of the convective nature of the, uh, uh, the one third of the uh, the region. Okay, so uh, the, typically the radiative uh, um, uh, time scales is of the order of 10 to 6 years, whereas the convective time scales is of the order of uh, months. Here is an example of how a convective uh, uh, convection can happen. Is uh, is assuming a partial of gas, uh, which is marked as a red color partial here. And uh, you have a surrounding um, um, uh, region which has a density rho, and this parcel has a density rho star. Okay. Um, at at uh, at the uh, at the interior, when the when the parcel is uh, if the parcel is denser than the surrounding, the parcel of gas will start to move up. As it as it uh, I mean uh, I mean it will start to move up. Uh, if the parcel of density is uh, higher compared to the uh, other regions, as it moves up, it uh, increases in volume and the density will decrease until it moves up to the region where the density inside and outside becomes equal to each other. So that's how the conve convection sets in. Um, and the convection should set in when the density radiations, I mean, the density gradient, d rho by dz, um, should, be, um, uh, should be larger than the d d rho by dc of the outside region. So that means like density, uh, as the parcel of gases moves up, uh, the density gradient of the outside should be much faster than the density gradients inside the gas of parcel. So that it will keep on moving up into the uh, surface of the sun. That is how the, uh, the parcel of uh, gases which will move from the bottom layers to the top layers of the solar uh, photosphere. 
this sequence of images from Gong shows the five minute oscillations as patches of the surface of the sun that are alternately red shifted and blue shifted. Each image is produced by subtracting a velocity image from one obtained 60 seconds earlier. At the more rapid frame rate, the vibrations are even more evident. Okay, so the, the movie, what you saw in, in here is a movie uh, taken by a set of uh, ground based observations. Uh, Placed at uh, six different locations to look at the uh, uh, surface of the sun uh, and and try to uh, look at these uh, uh, waves which are propagating from the interior to the outside layers. So the granulation patterns pro pro produced by these uh, um, the uh, the uh, what you call the convective uh, uh, energy transport uh, it also produces the wavy wavy nature. And that way we studies of this wavy nature, which we call it as the helioseismology, the seismology of the sun, uh, tells us about the internal structures of these uh, uh, convective layers. So that is how the convective layers uh, uh, studies are done. And just to show you the, the granulation pattern, what we see on the sun, I will just uh, come out of this presentation and I will share you, share you a movie. Just a minute, will come up. Okay, so what you see here is the, the granular pattern, what you see. Um, I mean, what you see is the bright region or the, uh, the, the convective cells, that means the energy gets transported from the interior to the surface. And as it reaches the surface, uh, it, it will be a, you'll see a, a bit cooler region surrounding it, and hence it falls back into the surface. That region is the region which is uh, surrounded by the the bright regions. So this is the region which is surrounded by it. And uh, if I play the movie, you can see that it is just evolves with time. And I also I also want you to notice this bright structures what you see here. Uh, they are brighter than the. And I also, I also want so you to notice the these region. bright structures. What but you have uh, these very fine, very small regions which are brighter, much brighter than the granular regions. They are all uh, magnetic in origin. We will talk about that uh, when, when, when I talk about the magnetic fields. So this is how the granulation looks like um, on the surface of the sun. Let me go back to my slide. So, okay. So uh, what we what I uh, showed you about uh, previously that uh, you have the sun uh, photosphere which is vibrating. And we know that the sun, uh, the, the 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 surface of the sun uh, oscillates about five bit uh, periodicity. Uh, this is the entire sun vibrates, uh, 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 which forms a complex pattern of acoustic waves uh, with a period of five minutes. And these oscillations are studied best using the Doppler uh, shift. I mean, Doppler uh, Doppler effect is something which you guys would have studied by looking at the spectral lines and uh, study them how the spectral line shifts, the red side or blue side. You talk about the uh, the velocities uh, coming from the sun, and they are all called p modes. And we, I mean, uh, typically uh, something like ten power seven uh, modes are present. That means the ten power seven different frequencies are present inside the sun, and the typical amplitude is uh, less than twenty centimeters per second. That means I need to measure a velocity much better than twenty centimeters per second from the sun. Okay, so that is how the accuracies, the, the current accuracies of the instruments is of the order of one centimeter per second. Okay, and uh, the frequency resolutions depends on how long you can observe. That's why we have a set of instruments which is placed across the globe so that we the sun doesn't set in any of the, uh, I mean, in your instrument. That means uh, when the sun sets in India, it is taken over by an instrument in Europe or in, in, in uh, USA. Which will start looking at the sun from from the time when the sun sets in India. So you get a 24 hours continuous coverage. That is how that movie was made. Uh, what, what I showed previously. Okay, and uh, we also know that the sun does rotate. I mean, this is a typical Doppler image what you see, and we can clearly see that uh, one side of the sun is uh, red shifted, and the other side of the sun is blue shifted. That means. Uh, the sun does rotate uh, with, with a period of uh, 24 days at the equator. And of course, the period varies between 24 days and 30 days when you move from the equator to the polar region. This we call it as a differential rotation. 
and it's an important uh, physics behind it for us to uh, form the activities and the active regions on the surface of the sun. This is a typical uh, temperature and density plot uh, from the surface of the sun. Here we mark the surface as a zero, zero high. And as you move uh, up from the, uh, uh, from in the solar atmosphere, we have this photosphere, and then the chromosphere and the corona what we see. And surprisingly, what you can see that there is a very st steep increase in temperature in the upper chromosphere, and uh, it reaches up to the billion degree Kelvin. It's about the rock billion degree Kelvin when it reaches the corona. So, which is uh, which is uh, different from your uh, uh, the second law of thermodynamics. What it says that the uh, the uh, the temperature should start decreasing from the source regions to the sink region, whereas here the temperature is uh, increasing. Uh, so this is a problem which we call as a corona heating problem. Uh, there's a good understanding of why it happens, uh, but still it is not fully resolved and solved. So who one is going to solve it uh, without any uh, in, uh, any uh, any uh, minimum doubt? They they would get a Nobel Prize in the near future. Now, sun is also looked at by multiple missions in multiple wavelengths, and what you see here is a uh, yeah, different avatar of sun uh, taken at different uh, um, uh, wave band and different meteorology. I'll go one at a time. The uh, leftmost uh, part, what you see here, where my cursor is, is the Doppler image, uh, which I showed you previously, how the, the bright and dark regions and how the sun is rotating. The next one is the bandogram, uh, basically measures the magnetic field. You can see the negative, I mean, the uh, dark and bright ones is nothing but the negative and positive polarity of the magnetic fields, which is uh, on the sun. And the third one is the uh, the visible light, which is the one which you will see it with a telescope or with a naked eye with uh, proper protection. You see the, the sunspot here, and the other uh, uh, structures, especially the limb darkening, is something which you can see. The the center is brighter compared to the uh, edge of that. We call that as a limb darkening. And this is an image taken in the chromosphere, um, um, uh, about 4,500 degree Kelvin, which is a lower chromosphere. You start to see the sunspot, and surrounding the sunspot, you start to see the bright structures. This is called as a flages in the in the sunspot. And uh, as you go to higher and higher temperature, you start to see that uh, this is uh, brightening more and more. And say, for example, at 50,000 degree Kelvin, the sunspot, which looked like a dark region here, becomes a brighter region here. So the high temperature regions, the the magnetic field becomes brighter compared to the surrounding. This is at 50,000 degree Kelvin. This is at 6 million degree Kelvin. Uh, I mean, 600,000 degree Kelvin. 60, yeah, 600,000 degree Kelvin. And this is at 1 million degree Kelvin. So this is 0.6 million and this is 1 million degree Kelvin. 2 million, 2.3 million, 6 million, and 10 million Kelvin. You can, you can see that the, the uh, avatar of sun uh, changes uh, from when you are in a few thousands to few tens of thousands to million degree Kelvin. So, so it's important for us to study the, the physics behind uh, the temperature changes or the brightness changes in these active regions, uh, which is an important research area currently going on to understand the uh, the uh, the, uh, the temperature as well as the brightness changes in the activity, and they also link to the uh, the uh, the, uh, the dynamical sun, which you, you would start to see it uh, in the next uh, few slides. Here is an image of the sun continuously observed. Um, uh, you see two of them. Both of them shows the dynamic nature of the, uh, the sun. And you see that the plasma is thrown into the interplanetary medium. And you also see that uh, at the end of the movie, you see that the director gets saturated and start to show um, uh, salt and pepper type of images. They are nothing but the uh, energy, energy which is deposited by this energetic particle on the director, which is placed in the sun earth line, which is, uh, th these Im images are from uh, SOFA observatory, which is placed at L1. And uh, you can see that the, uh, these, uh, these uh, dreadful events can, can uh, 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 deposit a lot of energy on your detectors, which is, which is placed to look at the sun. So it's an important element for us to understand what kind of energies of these particles 
and how how much of energy it can be deposited by them. And this movie also, I mean, which is running currently, you can see a lot of uh, uh, flares which happens, a lot of dynamics in the, the active regions, and then all this salt and pepper, what you see in the director is nothing but the high energy particles which is coming and hitting the director, uh, which is looking at the sun. So that's the kind of dynamics what you see um, uh, in the sun. And the right hand side movie uh, had started from the the west limb, I mean east limb, and gone all the way up to the west limb. So that means it covers about 20 days of uh, activity, uh, 20 days of data which you have looked at in the continuous limb. Moving on. Um, let's show you. Okay, and uh, when when these uh, energetic particles come and uh, uh, hit uh, the earth, and that's why uh, um, uh, you would start to see the effect on the earth. And what you see here on the right hand side is the very good, very nice aurora, which is formed by this particular. Apart from these dynamic events, we also have this uh, uh, stream of particles which is continuously uh, traveling from the sun, we call them as a solar wind, uh, which is about 10 power 36 particles per second is what, uh, uh, which is uh, continuously thrown into the interplanetary medium. And uh, on the right hand side, what you see here is the uh, the spectra of the particles, what you see. The, uh, the x-axis is the kinetic energy of the particles, and the y-axis is the, uh, the amount of the flux of the particles, which is uh, reaching the uh, reaching the L1 point. And the insert of this is basically tells you how the particle uh, velocities, I mean, uh, what you see here is two conditions, two images. One is uh, taken during the solar minimum, another is taken during the solar maximum. You can see that the during the solar minimum, the particle velocities are high in the polar regions and low in the equatorial regions. Okay, whereas on the solar maxima, the particle velocities are almost uh, uh, same in all directions more like a spherical uh, distribution as compared to the um, uh, activity uh, with uh, solar minimum. So this tells you that the solar wind velocities are governed by the solar activities which are which are happening at that particular moment. So there's some important implications to many of the uh, uh, many of the events what you see study from the sun as well as for the space with the uh, related phenomena. Here is a, um, a coverage of uh, the sun to all the way up to the earth. Uh, you can see that the, the center portion is the sun. And uh, the, uh, there are uh, instruments which looks at the sun earth line. And uh, this portion is the, uh, the earth. And you can see that if you could have seen that the, the, the disturbances caused by the sun do reach all the way up to the earth and creating all this kind of uh, auroras what you see uh, on, on ground. Here is a, a movie taken from our own uh, instrument uh, uh, from Moody Radio Telescope. And you can see that the center portion, again, is the sun. And here is the earth. And what you see here is the uh, yellowish color is the uh, electron, uh, which electrons, high, energetic electrons, which is propagating from the sun to the, uh, in the interplanetary medium. You can see all kinds of structures in this particular propagation. And this is taken with our Moody Radio Telescope by looking at uh, the uh, stars in the uh, interstellar medium. And uh, as you look at the star, when this electron propagates in the line of sight, the stellar light will, uh, I mean, the radio light will flicker. I mean, it's like very similar to the twinkling of the star with what you see when there is an Earth's atmosphere uh, between the star and uh, your observation. So here, between the star, radio star, and the radio observatory on, on Earth, the, when the CME or the electron disturbances passes through in the line of sight, the, uh, the radio intensity fluctuates, uh, very similar to twinkling. Uh, we call that as a scintillation. And by measuring the scintillation index, you can calculate what kind of disturbances it is uh, going. By looking at the hundreds of stars uh, spread across the, um, the three-dimensional space, this moving is uh, generated uh, from, from that uh, disturbances. And you can see that the disturbances uh, uh, travel less than five days uh, and the velocity of greater than 200 kilometers per second uh, from the uh, sun to the earth. 
I just want to uh, uh, give you a free few glimpses of how the um, uh, the the myotogram and dopplergram which I showed is taken because they are important for many of these uh, um, studies. Uh, the myotogram and dopplergram is uh, taken by an instrument called the Michelson trophometer. Uh, both the magnetic Doppler imager as well as the uh, heliospheric magnetic imager on SOHO and the SDO is based on this particular uh, principle. I will not dwell on this, uh, how exactly it is done. I would uh, request you to go ahead and read about it. And what you see here is the, uh, the SDO uh, or HMI um, uh, quick lift Doppler gram. You see on the left hand side is the Doppler gram, one side is uh, red shifted, and the other side is blue shifted. On the right hand side is the magnetic field information, which is both uh, positive and negative polarity, which which you can see. Uh, um, I mean, which basically measure the magnetic field from the from the sun. How do you do that? Uh, we use this uh, uh, three principle. What is called the Zeeman effect. And again, I'm sure you would have studied in your physics what is Zeeman effect. Uh, Zeeman effect is nothing but the splitting of uh, spectral lines in the presence of magnetic field. So we look at a particular spectral line and looks for its splitting as well as the polarization, and that gives us about the magnetic field strength as well as the direction. Similarly, there is an effect called Hande effect that is also related to weak magnetic fields. And of course, in radio domain, uh, we call that the set aero resonance, uh, which is also used to study the magnetic uh, uh, field of the sun. Of course, there are indirect proxies, uh, the bright and dark features which I showed you before also related to the magnetic fields. And the fiber seen in chromospheric lines, example, the Chalfa lines, is also mimics the magnetic fields. Like uh, your magnet, when you put a, um, uh, put a iron, uh, iron in the magnetic, uh, uh, I mean, uh, surrounding, you see this fibers and similar fibers you see it on the solar images. Uh, so here is an example, the dark regions is nothing but the, uh, the strong magnetic fields when you look at the photosphere. And uh, uh, when you look at uh, the uh, the continuum as well as in the G band, uh, you can see that the the granular structures which I showed you, and this uh, very uh, bright uh, structures uh, we call this as G band bright ones, they are also related to the uh, magnetic fields. And uh, this is a H alpha image, and you see this very nice fibrous structures all around the the, the sunspot regions, and they are they they depict the magnetic field. Uh, Lines of forces which is propagating from the from the sun to the uh, uh, from the sunspot to the outer regions, and uh, in the corona, if you look at it, you can see a beautiful uh, uh, loop structures which connects the positive polarity to the negative polarity, and you can see that the magnetic field lines of forces is actually embedded in these brightness, and you can see that there is a lot of magnetic field lines are nearby, they can crisscross, and when they crisscross, they reconnect. And that is how you get this uh, flares and color mass detections. So, um, so I'll just quickly go through this and coming to the point where uh, uh, I mean, just to give you a context to RTL one, which is going to be my talk for tomorrow before I wind up. What I talked about is uh, the the dynamic sun, which uh, provides the flares and color mass detections, and these dynamic suns both emit electromagnetic radiations and particles. And the particles will travel along the magnetic field lines in the interplanetary medium because they are all charged in nature. They cannot crisscross the magnetic field lines, so they will travel along the magnetic field lines, whereas the electromagnetic radiations will straight away cross in the interplanetary medium. And the uh, the uh, the, uh, the, um, the population of uh, the particles as well as the electromagnetic radiations in this region between the sun and earth is mostly governed by the sun. And of course, there are some galactic cosmic rays which can come from the, uh, the from the other stellar sources. And we also need to understand the propagation of these particles coming from the sun to Earth. They can get accelerated or decelerated depending on how the ambient medium behaves. And they also affect the Earth as a planet, as well as the other solar system planets, which is in the, uh, in, the, in, the in the vicinity of our solar system. So our Aditya L1 is going to sit in between the sun and earth, and it has uh, set up instruments which will look at these uh, phenomena in much more details, which we will talk about it during the next lecture. I think with that, I will stop here and uh, allow uh, for some time for any discussions or questions. Uh, uh, thank you a lot. Thanks a lot. I hope uh, I'm very clear on my presentation. Thank you.